Now, there are types of divorces. Whenever you read the books of fiqh, you will find that there are two types of divorce. Sunni type and bid'i type. What is the Sunnah divorce? Which is according to the Quran and the Sunnah. What is the Bid'ah divorce? Which is an innovated way of divorce. Where a person divorces not according to the Quran and Sunnah. So in order to understand this, we have to understand what is the Sunnah divorce. All scholars of Islam agree that the Sunnah divorce, which is valid, which takes place without any doubt is the divorce that takes place when a wife is not on her menses and she was not involved in sexual intercourse with her husband after her menses. Mm, can you elaborate? Okay. A wife has a menses, a period of menses, and then she has a period of purity. And in this period of purity, which is usually about 22 days, 23 days, she's pure. Her husband usually has intercourse with. Then she gets her period again. The divorce that is considered to be sunnah is when a woman has her period then she is pure she takes ghusl she's ready now to receive her husband but he does not have intercourse with her rather he wants to divorce her now this is a valid sunnah divorce the second type of divorce is the divorce that happens when a woman is pregnant. So also this is considered to be according to the Sunnah. It is a valid divorce. So what do you mean, Sheikh? Meaning that there are two types of Sunnah divorce or a divorce that is valid. If the woman is pregnant, and the man divorces her, this is a valid divorce. It counts on the spot. If the woman just had her period and she had her ghusl, no intercourse took place, and he divorces her, the divorce is valid. The same situation is when, for example, they are apart from one another. So the woman is in her father's house or the man is traveling overseas and they haven't seen the, one another for a whole year so definitely she got her menses like 10 times or more and over the phone they have an argument and the the the, the, the husband says well you divorced and then they come knocking on our doors. Sheikh, is the divorce sunnah or bid'ah? Is it valid? Definitely it's valid. Because she was in the state of purity and you did not have sexual intercourse with her in that state of purity. So the divorce is valid. This is known as divorce of the sunnah. Allah says in the Quran, يا أيها النبي إذا طلقتم النساء فطلقوهن لعدتهن وأحصل عدة. Allah says, O Prophet of Allah, when you divorce women, and this of course is addressing the whole ummah, not only the Prophet والسلام, When you divorce women, divorce them with a view of their prescribed waiting period and reckon the period accurately which means that the divorce has to be done in anticipation of the waiting period and when a woman 
is not, as we had described earlier, this divorce is not sunnah. What, it, what would it be? It would be a bid'ah divorce. So can you explain to us what is a bid'ah divorce? Okay. A bid'ah divorce is either when a man divorces his wife while she is in her monthly cycle. So she is actually now on her menses. And an argument takes place and he divorces. No, this is an innovation and you are sinful. Or she's clean from her menses and they sleep together for once, maybe more. And before she gets her following menses, they got, get into an argument and he divorces her. This is an innovation and he is sinful. This is known as a talaq al bid'i, innovated divorce, divorce that has bid'ah in it. And does it happen or doesn't it not happen? Well, it's an issue of dispute. But there are also other types of talaq al bid'a. So what we have mentioned about innovative, and the problem is that the word innovative sometimes comes to our mind as something good. This manager has innovative means of marketing his product. Worldly affairs, this is good. But in Islamic terminology, innovation is a bid'ah. And innovative is not something that is recommended. Rather, it is an innovation. So in terms of time, we've mentioned whether she is in her menses or she's in a state of purity that intercourse had preceded the divorce. This is bid'ah. Also, it can be bid'ah in the number of divorces. So Allah says that we should calculate. And to calculate is to only implement one divorce. So you want a divorce, you say, I divorce you. You don't say, I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you three times or more. You don't say you divorce thrice because all of this is innovation. Only one divorce takes place. You can't have a wholesale. Most those who divorce, especially these poor ones who follow the Hanafi madhab from the subcontinent usually, and they keep on knocking on my door until they want the door to fall. Sheikh, I was angry. I said to my wife, I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you. I was very angry, but I did not have any intention to leave my wife permanently. This was my, our first incident. We have 10 children and now her family came and took her from the house and they don't want us to reconcile. And they say that we are following Hanafi Madhab and she's haram for you. This is ignorance. Unless it was processed through a court of Islamic Sharia, they have no right to take your wife. And we have to go back to the Mufti so that he would give us an Islamic verdict according to Quran and the Sunnah, not according to his whims and desires or to his madhab. And I have tens of stories of evil involvement of the uncles or the siblings or the parents depriving a, a man from his wife because such an incident. Yes, it is an innovation. It's a bid'ah. But the million dollar or the million Kuwaiti dinar question would be, does it take place or not? This is an issue of dispute. And the reason of dispute is the hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, in addition to the general principles of Islam 
where the Prophet said والسلام, every action that is contrary to this matter of ours is rejected. So if we agree that such a divorce is a bid'ah, this hadith states that it is rejected, which means that we should not consider it to have taken place. And again, this is a major obstacle and an issue of dispute among scholars. On one hand, the majority of scholars and schools of thought say that it is a valid divorce, though the one who has said it and done it is sinful. So when you divorce your wife while she's on her and uh, while she is on her menses, or you divorce your wife in a state of purity which you had already had intercourse with, this is a sinful divorce, an innovative, innovated divorce, but it's a valid one. So one down, two to go. Other scholars, and they are of huge and great caliber, such as Al Imam Ibn Hazm al Zahiri. You're talking about some of the Tabi'een, Sayyid ibn al Musayyib. You're talking about Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn al Qayyim, Sheikh bin Baz, Sheikh ibn Uthaymeen, and so many, many other great scholars say that he's sinful and it is a bid'i talaq divorce, but it does not take place. And the reason is the hadith of Ibn Umar. When he divorced his wife once, and his father, Umar ibn Khattab, may Allah be with him, complained to the Prophet والسلام, of such. So the Prophet said to Umar, tell him to take her back and retain her until she is clean from menses. And then she has her next period and completes it. Then, when she is clean from menses, he has the choice either to hold on to her as his wife or to divorce her. This is the time when she can start her waiting period and the one which Allah has ordered to be uh, the start of divorce. Now, the hadith is clear and obvious. However, in some narrations, Ibn Umar, the one who was involved, said that, and it was not counted, meaning the divorce that he had given, which was a bid'ah, which was sinful, because of the instruction of the Prophet to retain her back, he considered it not to have taken place. And in other narrations, he said that it was counted as one. So the majority of scholars followed that and said, it takes place. So now we are in a dilemma. What to do if I divorced my wife? Should I consider it valid or not if it were done in a bid'ah way? What we usually tell people is that such issues can only be cleared with either a grand mufti who's willing to take what is needed to be taken. He's willing to take the fall for it and say it doesn't take place. Or it must be cleared through the court, the Sharia based court. And the vast majority of Sharia courts, unfortunately, would on the spot implement the divorce, even if it was innovation. And when a judge gives his verdict that these were three valid divorces, though the fatwa is against it, 
the one with the authority is the judge. So, so many times brothers come to me and say, Sheikh, I divorced my wife thrice in less than a couple of seconds. So I said, I divorced you, I divorced you, I divorced you. And this was my first divorce. We went to court and the Muslim judge issued a verdict stating that we are divorced thrice and she cannot go back to me until she marries another man. So what is the fatwa, Sheikh? I tell them it's too late. Had you come to me before you go to the Muslim court, maybe I would have given you a different fatwa or I would have directed you to the Grand Mufti to give you a fatwa, which is, I know, according to the Quran and Sunnah, and much lenient. But now, after it's been done, documented, stamped, sealed, and delivered, what do you want me to say? No one can go against the verdict of a Muslim judge in a court of law, of Sharia, except himself or someone in the same court. Because this is the law of the Muslim ruler that is binding and you have to follow it. Therefore, I unfortunately am inclined to go with the Jama'ah, with the Jumhur. Because though I sympathize with people who would like to cancel the third divorce on the grounds that he said it when she had her menses. Imagine the amount of divorce cases that men would manipulate and play with to the extent that maybe one out of a million divorce would take place. How is that? You'll end up having people divorcing their wives and coming to you and say, <clears throat> no, the divorce didn't take place, alhamdulillah. She uh, was on a menses. Oh, yeah, yesterday I had intercourse with her and I divorced her today, so it doesn't take place. And they keep on living, divorcing 10, 20, 50 times. And every time he says, no, no, it didn't take place. This is playing around. Sharia cannot be that loose for people to play with divorce and divorce whenever they want. Allah Azza wa Jal considered divorcing as signs of Allah that must not be mocked with or ridiculed. And therefore, this is an issue for the Muslim judge to give his fatwa or to the Grand Mufti, not any just Tom, Dick or Harry, but the Grand Mufti who would uh, put his input in it.